Good evening, everyone. Welcome you all to the online lecture series of Physiological Society of India or PSI. This lecture series of Physiological Society of India was initiated on 13th July 2023. The objective of this lecture series is to add on to the needs of the curricular aspects of physiological courses at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels. The Education Committee of Physiological Society of India regularly organizes this online lecture series on fourth Saturday of every month between 7 to 9 p.m. And today we are assembled here to experience the seventh lecture series of Physiological Society of India. The theme of today's series is based on the endocrine system of human body. This is our immense pleasure to get opportunity to hear from our honorable speakers, Dr. Shottojit Tripathi and Dr. Aroni Dash. Today's first session is based on the basic endocrine system and the topic is overview of the endocrine gland functions which will be delivered by Dr. Shottojit Tripathi. Dr. Tripathi is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Physiology and Allied Sciences, Amity Institute of Health Allied Sciences, Amity University, Noida. He did his Bachelor in Human Physiology from Midnapur College, West Bengal, and he pursued his post-graduation in human physiology with specialization in microbiology and immunology from Vidya Sagar University, West Bengal. He won the silver medal in MSc in the year of 2010. After that, he worked as junior research fellow in the Department of Science and Technology funded by the government of India in the year of 2010. Then he completed his doctoral study from Vidya Shagur University in the year of 2016 on nanodrug delivery against rodent malaria. Thereafter, Dr. Tripathi worked as senior lecturer in physiology in Hitkarini Dental College and Hospital, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. He attended Michigan State University, USA in 2017 as postdoctoral research associate. After that, he joined as postdoctoral fellow in University of Free State, South Africa. In December 2022, Dr. Tripathi joined as assistant professor in University Center for Research and Development in Chandigarh University. Presently, he is working at Amit University, Noida, since 2023. Dr. Tripathi has numerous publications, including more than 52 national and international publications. He has published four book chapters and one book in physiology. He is a life member of the Indian Science Congress Association, Physiological Society of India, South African Society for Basic and Clinical Psychology. He is playing a role as an editor and reviewer of different international scientific journals such as MBIO, American Society for Microbiology, Molecular Therapy, Nucleic Acid, and many more. Now, I would like to request uh, Dr. Shottojit Tripathi in this webinar series uh, to deliver his lecture. Welcome, Dr. Tripathi, again. Uh, sir, uh, please start your session. And the session is uh, over to you now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, madam, for, for your introducing to me. And OK. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. And, and slide is visible, right? No, slide is not visible, not yet visible, sir, just now.
is it visible now no sir i can see just it's coming right now it's coming yes sir it's now it's visible okay thank yes, you ma'am good evening once again to everyone first of all i would like to thanks professor prashun nayak sir and enter educational committee members of physiological society of india for giving me this platform to interact with all of you today i will discuss with you on overview of endocrine gland and functions we know our body is composed with different system there are nervous system musculoskeletal circulatory respiratory gastrointestinal system integumentary system urinary immune reproductive and endocrine systems these systems have their own functions and they also coordinate each other to maintain the homeostasis and keep us alive today we will focus on endocrine system so today's discussions objectives is to identify the contribution of the endocrine system to homeostasis and to encapsulate the site of production regulation and effects of the hormones and i believe after this discussion we will be able to categorize the key endocrine glands in the body and the hormones that they release and also we will be able to describe a basic hormone cascade and explain how the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis works so endocrine system endocrine the word derived from greek word that is endo means within and krenes means uh, to circulate right uh, so to secrete and this endocrine system acts with nervous system to coordinate and integrate activity of body cells it influences metabolic activity by hormones transported in the blood it's response slower but longer lasting than nervous system so endocrinology is study of hormones and endocrine system it controls reproduction growth and development it maintain the electrolyte water and nutrient balance of blood it regulates cellular metabolism and energy balance it helps for mobilization of body defense there are two types of glands in our body mainly the exocrine glands and endocrine glands the difference between exocrine and endocrine and the exocrine glands secretes and it has a specific ducts towards to carry transport but endocrine glands have no specific ducts the hormone which is released from the glands is it is transported by blood or lymph so the endocrine glands mainly composed with pituitary thyroid parathyroid adrenal and pineal glands hypothalamus also play as a neuroendocrine organs there are some organs which play exocrine and endocrine functions like pancreas gonads placenta other tissues like uh, other tissues and organs have also uh, capability to produce some hormones like adipocyte thymus some cells in small intestine stomach kidneys and heart uh, among the different system in our body the mainly nervous system and endocrine system is uh, take part for coordination with body cells so if we look at the difference of nervous system and nervous system and uh, system the nervous system is high electric signal along specialized cells called neurons the endocrine system which is made up with endocrine glands secretes hormones that coordinate with the different cells of the body in our body there are different messengers which play role uh, to communicate in the body allowing cells tissue and organs to coordinate their activities there are some autocrines and paracrines autocrine which chemicals that exert effect on same cells whereas paracrine locally acting chemicals that affect cells other than those that secrete them the hormones long distance chemical signals travel in blood or lymph keep in mind autocrine and paracrine are local chemical messenger not considered part of endocrine system there are three type of hormonal control pathway in the diagram you can find in the first one simple endocrine pathway where low blood glucose level as an example low blood glucose level stimulate the receptor on pancreas which secretes glucagon and which is transported through blood vessels works on the target organ that is liver and then liver starts the glycogenolysis and increase the blood glucose level the second one simple neurohormone pathway 
due to the baby's suckling, the sensory neuron is activated and activates the hypothalamus, which secretes oxytocin on the posterior pituitary. And then the, uh, the hormone oxytocin is carried by the blood vessels and works on the smooth muscles in the breast and it helps to release the milk. The third one is neuroendocrine pathway. When hypothalamus is activated and it secretes the prolactin releasing hormone, it is carried by the blood and works on anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary lobe then secretes the prolactin hormone, which works on mammary glands to produce milk. Now, if we look at the chemistry of hormones, there are mainly two main classes. One is amino acid based hormones, which are amino acid derivatives, peptides, and proteins, and another is steroids, which is synthesized from the cholesterol mainly. If we look at the synthesis of peptide and protein hormones, which are mainly secreted from pituitary, pancreatic, and parathyroid hormones, the hormonal gene is uh, transcripted and then it comes into the endoplasmic reticulum with the additional sequence that is called docking peptide. And then it, uh, it is called pre-pro hormone. And then it is uh, transported, come into the Golgi bodies, Golgi complex for the modification. And there are some also additional sequence which keep inactive the hormones. And when it comes in, come into the blood uh, circulation, then the peptide is fragmented. In the bottom, you can find the insulin, which is uh, initially uh, attached with the additional sequence. It is inactive. And when it comes into the blood circulation, it in the peptide is fragmented. And then insulin starts to work. Next, steroid hormones, which is mainly secreted from adrenal cortex, placenta, ovaries, and testes. It is mainly derived from the cholesterol. And it can cross the membrane, usually bound to carrier proteins. Another hormones, amine hormones, like melatonin, which is tryptophan derived, catecholines, which are tyrosine derived, but it behaves like a peptide hormone, thyroid hormone, which is also tyrosine derived, but it's like as a steroid hormone. Next, mode of actions. Hormones act at receptor in one of two ways, depending on their chemical nature and receptor location. There are some water-soluble hormones and lipid-soluble hormones. The water-soluble hormones act on plasma membrane receptor. It acts via G-protein second messenger and cannot enter the cells. The diagram showing the mode of actions of water-soluble hormone. Here you can find hormone acting as a fast messenger, which activates the membrane-bound receptor. The receptor then activates G-protein. And then G-protein activates the adenylate cycle. And this adenylate cyclase then converts the ATP to CMP. Here, CMP acting as a second messenger. And this AMP acts the uh, protein kinase and in protein kinase activates uh, different functions. Next, mode of action of hormones. The lipid soluble hormones, uh, which uh, act uh, bind with the receptor uh, protein, which is in the cytosol, which can pass through the plasma membrane and then form the receptor complex and then receptor hormone uh, com this complex then uh, uh, comes into the nucleus and it's bind with the specific site of the dna and then mrna directs the protein synthesis the hormone have the target cell specificity the target cell specificity of hormone is a crucial aspect of their functioning in the body the hormones are signaling molecules that travel through the bloodstream to reach target cells and elicit specific response Target cell must have specific receptor to which hormone binds. For example, adenocorticotropic hormone, which have the specific receptor on adrenal cortex. Thyroxine receptor uh, is found nearly all cells of body. Next, target cell activation. As uh, target cell specificity, the hormone have the capability, I mean, specificity on target cell activations. It is upregulated when the target cell form more receptor in response to low hormone levels. And it is downregulated when target cell lose receptor in response to high hormone levels. The hormones, uh, there are three types of endocrine gland stimuli. First one, humoral stimuli where uh, body fluids or any uh, ions uh, alterations occurs. As an example, you can find when calcium level decreases in the blood, it activates the parathyroid gland. This parathyroid gland then releases the parathyroid hormone, which helps to maintain the calcium balance in the blood. Next, neuronal stimuli, where the nervous system takes part to stimulate the adrenal medulla uh, to release the um, hormones. As an example, you can uh, find the uh, sympathetic nervous system uh, 
stimulate the adrenal medulla, which release the catecholamines, epinephrine and non-epinephrine. Next, hormonal stimuli, where one hormone stimulates other endocrine glands to release their hormones. Hypothalamic hormones stimulate release of most anterior pituitary hormones. The anterior pituitary hormones stimulate target to secret still more hormones. And uh, you will find here that the hypothalamus, when it is activated, it, it secretes the releasing hormone, which works on anterior pituitary gland. Then anterior pituitary uh, gland secretes stimulating hormone on the target uh, organs. And these target organs release the hormones. Uh, like thyroid gland release the thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenal cortex release some hormones uh, and gonadal hormones is released from the gonadal part. Next, nervous system modulation. Nervous systems have a role to stimulate uh, the endocrine glands and uh, they have their negative feedback mechanism also. As an example, under uh, severe stress, hypothalamus and sympathetic nervous system activated. And the nervous system can override also normal endocrine glands. Duration of hormonal activity. It ranges from 10 seconds to several hours. Effects may disappear as blood levels drop. Some persist at low blood levels. Interaction of hormone at target cell. There are different interactions. Uh, some hormone, uh, more than one hormone produce same effect on target cells uh, and causes the amplification that is called synergism. Here you can find uh, that glucagon, epinephrine, cortical, uh, cortisol uh, increases the blood glucose level high. Then glucagon and epinephrine together, little bit less. Uh, like a testosterone and follicle stimulating hormone, both works for sperm production. Another functions, mode of functions like permissiveness, one hormone cannot exert its effects without another hormone. For example, thyroid hormone increases the number of beta adrenergy receptor. These receptors are required for epinephrine. So without thyroid hormone, the effect of epinephrine on target cells would be weak. Another antagonism where one or more hormone oppose actions of another like insulin and glucagon. You know insulin decreases the blood glucose level where glucagon increases the blood glucose level. Calcitonin, parathyroid is also calcitonin dec uh, decreases the calcium level, parathyroid hormone increases the calcium level in the blood. Regulation of hormone and their receptor. As I told, the hormone have the target cell specificity and target receptor specificity. So receptor does not destroy or reactive. when increased hormone concentration lead to decrease the number of active receptor and upregulation occurs when the hormone induces greater than normal formation of a receptor or intracellular signaling protein. Now clearance of hormones. Two factors control the concentration of hormone in the blood, the rate of its secretion and the rate of its removal and inactivations. Hormones are cleared by the metabolic destruction by tissues through enzymes excretion by the liver into bile, excretion by the kidneys into urine and binding with the tissue. Keep in mind clearance of protein bound hormones is slower than clearance of peptide hormones. Now we will move uh, on the endocrine glands which secretes these hormones. Though it, it may be defined as a group of secretory cells that release their products, chemical signals called hormones usually into the circulation. The secretion never pass uh, through the ducts, it pass through the blood or limbs. The pituitary gland and hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, you know, have two major lobes, posterior pituitary and anterior pituitary. If you look at the blood supply to the pituitary gland, the blood supply derives from two groups of the vessels coming of the internal carotid artery. There are inferior hypophysal arteries provide blood mainly for the neurohypophysis and superior hypophysal artery. Hormone-rich hormone, hormone -rich venous blood leaves the pituitary gland by the anterior and posterior hypophysal vein. And this diagram showing the hypothalamus hypophysial tract where posterior pituitary is connected with the neuron. And in hypothalamus, you, you will find paraventricular nucleus, supraoptic nucleus. And the hormone which is synthesized is stored in, into the axon terminal. When neuron fires, the axon, ter axon terminal releases the uh, hormones. You know from the posterior pituitary mainly oxytocin and adage hormone is secreted and from anterior pituitary growth hormone, prolactin hormone, some base of is like thyroid stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, nutrient hormone and adenocorticotropic hormone. Now the hypothalamus controls release of hormones from the pituitary gland in two different pathways. As I told uh, posterior pituitary hormone uh, 
uh, um, release uh, uh, synthesized in the hypothalamus and then it is released to the neuron and comes into the posterior pituitary. The hypothalamic neuron synthesizes oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. And oxytocin and ADH are transported down to the axons of the hypothalamic hypophysial tract to the posterior pituitary. Now, when hypothalamic neurons fire axon potential arriving at the axon terminals causes the oxytocin or ADH to be released into the blood. Posterior pituitary and hypothalamic hormones. They are, uh, as I told, oxytocin and ADH, they are almost uh, identical, only differing to amino acid. Now, ADH, which is also known as vasopressin, high blood osmotic pressure stimulates hypothalamic osmoreceptor. These osmoreceptors active the hypothalamic neurosecretory cells that synthesize and release ADH. Nerve impulse liberates ADH from axon terminals in the posterior pituitary gland into the bloodstream, which acts on kidney uh, to retain the water and acts on the sweat gland to uh, decrease the water loss by perspiration and also helps for vasoconstriction. ADH imbalance causes diabetes insipidus uh, due to the hypothalamus or posterior pituitary damage. And there are also syndrome of inactivated ADH secretions, uh, which raises the retention of fluid, headache, and disorientation. From posterior pituitary, there are another hormone that is oxytocin. Produced in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior or neurohypophysis. Target tissues includes a memory gland. Stimuli bringing about release of oxytocin, stretching of the uterus, cervix, sexual intercourse, and stimulation of nipple during nursing. The functions of oxytocin, onset of delivery, expulsion of uterine lining during menses, sperm transport during intercourse, and milk letdown. There are some special cases like nursing mothers and uterine sep and neural input to oxytocin release. Next, the hormone released from the uh, to the anterior pituitary when appropriately stimulated hypothalamic neurons secret releasing or inhibiting hormones into the primary capillary uh, plexus the hypothalamic hormones travel through the portal veins to the anterior pituitary where they stimulate or inhibit release of hormones made in the anterior pituitary next in response of releasing hormones the anterior pituitary secretes hormones into the secondary capillary plexus these in turn empties into the general circulation anterior pituitary release the growth hormone thyroid stimulating hormone adrenocorticotropic hormone follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone prolactin First, we will look at the growth hormone, which is also known as somatotropin, and it is produced by the somatotropic cells. When low uh, blood glucose uh, and other stress in a, in stimulate, then increase growth hormone releasing hormone. And then it comes, uh, it, uh, the anterior pituitary release the growth hormone, which helps to increase protein synthesis, uh, increase the tissue growth, increase the fat breakdown, and glucose synthesis, and also somatomedin secretions. They have the negative feedback also when uh, growth hormone is sufficient in the uh, blood or body, then it also uh, uh, decrease the uh, uh, growth hormone releasing hormone and increase the, sorry, decrease the growth hormone inhibiting hormone. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, when sufficient, then it, in, it decrease the growth hormone releasing hormone. But when it, it's a positive feedback um, uh, actions, then it decrease the growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Next. Homeostatic Im imbalance of growth hormone due to the hypersecretion in case of children, gigantism, and in case of adults, acromegaly occurs, and due to the hyposecretion, pituitary dwarfism is found in the children. The schematic presentation showing the actions of growth hormone, growth hormone indirectly or di directly, they have the functions, indirect actions on uh, growth promoting on liver and tissues, which secretes insulin like growth factors, which affects on skeletal increased cartilage formation, skeletal growth, and extraskeletal increased protein synthesis and cell growth and proliferation. Whereas direct actions causes the metabolism and anti-insulin, fat metabolism occurs, increased fat breakdown and release. Carbohydrate metabolism, increased blood glucose, and other anti-insulin effects. It have also negative feedback when insulin-like growth factor. It have a negative feedback on both hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. <clears throat> Next, thyroid stimulating hormone. 
produced by the thyrotropic cells of the anterior pituitary. It stimulates normal development and secretory activity of the thyroid. Release triggered by thyrotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus. Inhibited by rising blood levels of thyroid hormones that act on pituitary and hypothalamus. This schematic diagram, you can find hypothalamus release the thyroid releasing hormone, which works on anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary release the thyroid stimulating hormone, which helps uh, or uh, st uh, stimulate thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormones, which works on the target cells. It have also negative feedback, which works both on hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. Next, adenocorticotropic hormone triggered by the hypothalamic corticotropin releasing hormone. CRH from hypothalamus causes release of ACTH from anterior pituitary. ACTH causes cortisol secretions from the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone secretion from the adrenal cortex uh, also occurs. If adrenal cortex is diseased and malfunctional, ACTH level rise and, and this ACT in CRH binds directly to melanocyte of the skin, causes increase in the production of melanin. ACTH, lipotropins, beta endorphins, and uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone are manufactured from the same precursor. Internal and external factors such as fever, hypoglycemia, and stressor can alter release of CRH. Next, melanocyte stimulating hormone. ACTH, MACs, endorphins, and lipotropins all derive from the same large precursor molecule when stimulated by CRH. MACs causes melanocyte to produce more melanin. Endorphins act as an analgesic produced during times of stress, and lip lipotropins uh, causes adipose cells to catabolize fat lipolysis. Next, gonadotropin, follicle stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone secreted by the gonadotropic cells of anterior pituitary. Follicle stimulating uh, hormone stimulates gamete production and luteinizing hormone promotes production of gonadal hormones absent from blood in prepubertal pre boys and girls. If we look at the hormones which is secreted mainly from pituitary gland, uh, posterior pituitary, anterior pituitary, uh, we will find from posterior pituitary uh, anterior antidiuretic hormone which is uh, small peptide in nature, its target tissue is kidney and increased water reabsorption, oxytocin, small peptide in nature. Target tissue is uterus and mammary glands, increased uterine contraction, increased milk expulsion from mammary glands, unclear functions in male. And from anterior pituitary, we found growth hormone, which is protein in nature, uh, works on most of the tissue, increased growth in tissue, increased amino acid uptake and protein, breakdown of lipids and release of fatty acid from cells, increased glycogen synthesis, increased blood glucose level. Thyroid stimulating hormone, it is glycoprotein in nature, it works on thyroid gland, increased thyroid hormone secretion. Next, adenocorticotropic hormone, which is peptide in nature, uh, works on adrenal cortex, increased glucocorticoid hormone secretion. Lipotropins, which is peptide in nature, works on fat tissues, increased fat breakdown. Beta endorphins, peptide in nature, works on brain and analgesia in the brain, inhibition of gonadotropin releasing hormone secretion. MSH, peptide in nature, melanocyte in the skin, and increased melanin production in melanocyte to make the skin darker in color. Luteinizing hormone, which is glycoprotein in nature, and uh, target tissue is ovaries in males, sorry, in females and testes in males, ovulation and progesterone production in ovaries, testosterone synthesized and support for sperm cell production in testes. FSH is glycoprotein in nature, it uh, works on follicles in ovaries in females and seminiferous tubules in males. Follicle maturation and estrogen secretion in ovaries and sperm cell production in testes is the functions of the FSH. Prolactin, which is protein in nature, works on ovaries and mammary glands in the females. Milk production in lactating women increased response of follicle to luteinizing and follicle stimulating hormone, but unclear functions in males. Next, thyroid gland. It has two lobes, two lateral lobes, composed of follicle cells that produce glycoprotein thyroglobulin, and parafollicular cells also produce the hormone that is calcitonin. The thyroid hormone, actually two related compounds, we know um, that thyroxine and triiodothyronine affects virtually every cell in the body. <coughs> Sorry. The thyroid hormone, the major metabolic hormone, increased metabolic rate and heat production, regulations of tissue growth and development, maintenance of blood pressure. 
If we look at the synthesis of thyroid hormone briefly, we will find the thyroglobulin synthesized and the iodide is uh, trapped and then the iodination occurs with the tyrosine, which is a part of the thyro, uh, thyroglobin molecules and it, uh, it occurs uh, when it comes out from the thyroid follicular cells. And then it, uh, the thyroglobulin colloid form that is DIT and MIT, it iodine and tyrosines are linked together to form T3 and T4. Then again, it is endocytosed and uh, combined with the lysosome. This lysosome cleaves the thyroglobulin from the T3 and T4. And this T3 and T4 diffuse into the blasting to work. This T4 and T3 transported by a thyroxine binding globulins. Both bind to target receptor, but T3 is 10 times more active than T4. And in peripheral tissues, uh, the T4 converted to T3. This scheme we already uh, seen in last slides and they were hypothalamus release the thyroid releasing hormone which works on anterior pituitary and then anterior pituitary uh, works on thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormone and works on target cells. The homeostatic imbalance of thyroid hormone which causes uh, hyposecretions in adults causes mixed edema, goiter, hyposecretion in infants cretinism, hypersecretion causes Graves disease. Next, calcitonin, which is released from the parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland and uh, no known physiological role in humans, but it uh, plays antagonist role uh, to parathyroid hormone. At higher than normal doses, inhibits osteoclast activity and release of calcium from bone matrix. It stimulates calcium uptake and incorporation into the bone matrix. Parathyroid gland, uh, it is embedded in the posterior aspect of the thyroid contain oxyphil cells and parathyroid cells that secret parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone, most important hormone in calcium homeostasis. In the diagram, you can find the location of parathyroid gland and it, uh, the histological structure, which is composed with the parathyroid cells and oxyphil cells. Here, the schematic presentation showing how parathyroid hormone takes part to maintain the calcium homeostasis. Here, parathyroid, uh, when calcium level decreases in the blood, it stimulates the parathyroid gland to release the parathyroid hormone, which works uh, to increase the osteoclast activity uh, in bone, causes calcium and phosphate release into the blood. Calcium reabsorption in kidney increased and activation of the vitamin D, which helps for calcium absorption from food in small intestine. Homeostatic imbalance, hyperparathyroidism, causes bone soften and deform, elevated calcium depletes nervous system and contributes to formation of kidney stones. Hypoparathyroidism, following gland trauma or removal or dietary magnesium deficiency, results in tetany, respiratory paralysis and death. Next, adrenal glands, fair pyramid shaped organs out of kidneys, we know structurally and functionally are two glands in one. Adrenal medulla nerve tissue part of sympathetic nervous system and adrenal cortex three layers of glandular tissue that synthesize uh, different hormones. Here you can find the cortex and uh, histological structure of the adrenal uh, uh, cortex and adrenal medulla region. The uh, adrenal cortex composed with zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis and adrenal medulla which release the epinephrine and non-epinephrine. Now, hormones of adrenal cortex, mineralocorticoids, which is released from zona glomerulosa, aldosterone produced in greatest amount, increased rate of sodium reabsorption by kidneys, increasing sodium blood levels. Stimulus for production is low blood, uh, low blood pressure and increases water reabsorption and therefore blood volume. Glucocorticoids, which is uh, released from the zona fasciculata, cortisol is major hormone, increases fat and protein breakdown, increases glucose synthesis promotes the increased use of fats and proteins by muscles, decrease inflammatory response. Androgen released from zona reticularis, weak androgen secreted then converted to testosterone by peripheral tissue. Stimulate pubic and axillary hair growth and sexual driving females. Homeostatic imbalance causes allos uh, allosteronism hyper due to the hypersecretion, hypertensions and edema due to excessive sodium ion. Excretion of potassium leading to abnormal functions of neurons and muscles. Glucocorticoids, which helps to keep blood glucose level relatively constant, maintain blood pressure by increasing actions of vasoconstrictor. 
homeostatic imbalance of glucocorticoids, hyper secretion causes Cushing syndrome, which uh, raises depressed cartilage and bone formation, inhibits inflammation, depressed immune system, disrupt cardiovascular, neuronal, and gastrointestinal function, function and hyposecretion causes Addison disease. Gonadocorticoids, most weak androgens converted to testosterone in tissue cells, some to estrogen. It contributes to onset of puberty, appearance of secondary sex characteristics, sex drive in women, estrogen in postmenopausal women. Hypersecretion causes uh, adenogenital syndrome, not noticeable in adult males. And uh, in case of females and prepubertal males, boys' reproductive organs mature secondary sex characteristic emerge early. In females, we are uh, masculine pattern of body hair, clitoris resembles small penis. <laughs> Adrenal medulla. Secretary pro uh, products from uh, medullary coma cells are neuropeptides, which are epinephrine and norepinephrine. Combined with adenosine membranes bound receptor, secretion of hormones prepared body for physical activity. Effects are short-lived, hormones rapidly metabolized, half-life is minutes. Epinephrine which increase blood levels of glucose via glycogenolysis, increase fat breakdown in adipose tissue, causes dilation of blood vessels in skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles. Epinephrine and norepinephrine increase heart rate and force of contraction, causes blood vessels to constrict in skin, kidneys, gastrointestinal tract and other viscera. Adrenal medulla, due to the hypersecretion, it raises hyperglycemia, increased metabolic rate, rapid heartbeat and palpitation, hypertension, intense nervous system, sweating. Hyposecretion is not so problematic, but adrenal catecholamine is not essential in life. The diagram showing the role of adrenal gland during the prolonged stress condition and short term stress condition. During the prolonged stress condition, hypothalamus releases the corticotropic releasing hormone which uh, secrets, uh, which is which comes in the anterior pituitary, which works to release the adrenocorticotropic hormone. And it secretes mineral corticoids, which uh, works on kidney to retain sodium and water, blood volume and blood pressure rise. Glucocorticoids, proteins and fat converted to glucose or broken down for energy. Blood glucose increases, immune system suppressed. During short term uh, stress, the uh, sympathetic nervous system act, uh, become activated and it release, it works on adrenal, Medulla and release the catecholamines, which increases the heart rate, blood pressure increase, bronchioles dilate, liver converts glycogen to glucose and release glucose to blood. Blood flow changes, reducing digestive system activity and urine output. Metabolic rate increases. Pineal gland, small gland hanging from roof of third ventricle. The cell secreted melatonin derived from serotonin. The melatonin may affect on timing of sexual maturation and puberty. It uh, works uh, on circadian rhythm, physiological process that show rhythmic variations, produce antioxidant and detoxification molecules in cells. Pancreas, which is a triangular gland partially behind stomach, has both exocrine and endocrine functions. Acinar cells produce enzyme juice for digestion. Pancreatic islets contain endocrine cells. Alpha cells we know produce glucagon and beta cells produce insulin. Glucagon major target organ is liver causes increased blood glucose level. Effects on glycogenolysis, breakdown of glycogen to glucose and glucose only oxygenesis, synthesis of glucose from lactic acid and non carbohydrates And it helps to release glucose to blood. The schematic diagram showing the role of insulin and glucagon during uh, to maintain the blood glucose level. When blood glucose level increase, you know the pancreas uh, from pancreas beta cell insulin is released, and then uh, blood glucose convert into glycogen and store. And when the blood glucose level decreases, glucagon is released and it breaks down the uh, glycogen and uh, convert to glucose, which comes into the blood, and the blood glucose level is maintained. Factors that influence insulin release, elevated blood glucose level, primary stimulus, rising blood levels of amino acid and fatty acid, release of acetylcholine by parasympathetic nerve fibers, hormones, glucagon, epinephrine, growth hormone, thyroxine, glucocorticoids, somatostatin, sympathetic nervous system, homeostatic imbalance of insulin, raises the uh, diabetes mellitus due to the hyposecretion 
or hypoactivity of insulin blood glucose level remain high raises nausea higher blood uh, higher blood glucose levels glycosuria and uh, fats used for cellular phase causes lipidemia if severe ketone from fatty acid metabolism ketoneuria also occurs untreated ketoacidosis results hyperapnea disrupt the heart activity and auto transport depression of nervous system results coma and death also Homeostatic imbalance of insulinism causes hyperinsulinism, excessive insulin secretion causes hypoglycemia, low blood glucose levels, anxiety, nervousness, disorientation, unconsciousness, even death, treated by sugar ingestion. Three cardinal signs of uh, diabetes mellitus is polyuria, you know, huge urine output, polydipsia, excessive thirst, and polyphagia, excessive hunger, and food consumption. Next, Ovaries and placenta, gonads produce steroid sex hormones, same as those of adrenal cortex. Ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen helps for maturation of reproductive organs, appearance of secondary sexual characteristics with progesterone causes breast development and cyclic changes in the uterine mucosa. Placenta which secretes estrogen, progesterone and human chorionic gonotropin which is known as HCG. Testis produce the testosterone, initiates maturation of male reproductive organs, causes appearance of male secondary sexual characteristics and sex drive, necessary for normal sperm production, maintains reproductive organs in functional state. So overall from the reproductive organs, we can found that from testis, testosterone is released, which is steroid in uh, nature, works on most cells, aids in spermatogenesis, development in genitalia, maintenance of functional reproductive organs, secondary sex characteristic and sexual behavior. Inhibin also released from the testes, which is polypeptide in nature, works on anterior pituitary gland and inhibits FSC secretion. From ovaries, we found estrogen is released, which is steroid in nature, works on most cells. Progesterone also works on most cells and steroid in nature, which uh, they act on AIDS in uterine and mammary gland development and function, maturation of genitalia, secondary sex characteristics, sexual behavior and menstrual cycle. Ovary also release inhibin, which is polypeptide in nature, and uh, its target tissue is anterior pituitary gland, inhibits follicle stimulating hormone secretion. Relaxing also released from the ovary, which is also polypeptide in nature, uh, mainly works on connective tissue cells, increase the flexibility of connective tissue in the pelvic area, especially in the symphysia pubis. Next other <coughs> organ, which uh, releases some hormones, <coughs> Sorry, that is heart, which secretes uh, release the atrial natriuretic peptide, decrease blood sodium concentration, therefore blood pressure and blood volume. Kidneys, which release uh, erythropoietin, signals production of red blood cells. Renin also released from the kidney, which initiates the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. Now, if we look at the development aspects of the hormone, hormone producing glands arise from all three germ layers. Mainly gonadal and, adren ad gonadal and adrenal cortex hormones arise from the mesoderm and the amine peptide and protein hormones arise from the endoderm and ectoderm. Most endocrine organs operate oil until old age. Exposure to pesticides, industrial chemicals, arsenic, dioxin and soil and water pollutant disrupt hormone function. Sex hormones, thyroid hormones and glucocorticoids are vulnerable to the effect of pollen. Interference with glucocorticoid may help explain high cancer rates in certain areas. Ovaries undergo significant changes with age and become unresponsive to gonadotropins. Problems associated with estrogen deficiency of testosterone also diminishes with age, but effect is not usually seen until very old age. Growth hormone levels decline with age, accounts for muscle atrophy with age, Thyroid hormone declines with age, contributing to lower basal metabolic rates. Parathyroid hormone levels remain fairly constant with age, but lack of estrogen in older women makes them more vulnerable to bone mineralizing effects on effects of parathyroid hormone. So uh, from this discussion, if you review, you, you, we, we have been able to come to know the chemical messenger from endocrine system helps regulate body activities. Their effect is of longer duration and is more generalized than that of the nervous system. Endocrine glands secret hormone directly into the blood, which transports the hormones through the body. Cells in a target tissue have receptor sites for specific hormones. Many hormones are regulated by negative feedback mechanism. Some are controlled by other hormones and others are affected by direct nerve stimulation. 
even though the endocrine glands are scattered throughout the body they are still considered to be one system because they have similar functions similar mechanism of influence and many important interrelationship major glands uh, which uh, we started today the, those are pituitary gland thyroid gland parathyroid gland adrenal gland pancreas gonads which is composed with testes and ovaries pineal glands and other endocrine glands and this is uh, this diagram showing overall the hormone release from different parts of the body this is the source of the information thank you thank you so much uh, dr yeah. tripathi for this nice presentation hi dr tripathi have discussed about the endocrine system in a detailed manner including different types of hormones present in our body and their mode of action separately and in detail he also mentioned the interrelation between hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal glands that is hp axis not only that dr tripathi also showed the basic histological structure of this endocrine glands according to me this presentation will be very much helpful to uh, undergraduate students to get uh, a preliminary as well as detailed idea about the human endocrine system and uh, uh, the hormones are released from these endocrine glands and uh, the normal function of these hormones and the effect uh, that is produced by the imbalance of these hormones so thank you so much again dr tripathi and uh, if anyone have any queries related uh, to this topic uh, please feel free to communicate uh, dr tripathi or you may put your uh, queries or questions in the chat box thank you so much dr tripathi again uh, now uh, let thank you, uh, thank you committee members uh, thank you Let's welcome our uh, next speaker, Dr. Aruni Dash, who will discuss about the clinical aspects of endocrine system, and his topic is diseases of the endocrine system. Dr. Aruni Dash completed MBBS from Badwan Medical College in the year of 2019. Thereafter. Dr. Das obtained MD in Physiology from Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and Research, Kolkata, in 2015. After completion of MD, Dr. Das joined All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi, and he worked there from 2016 to 2018. Presently, Dr. Das is working as an assistant professor. in the department of physiology all india institute of medical sciences gorakhpur since 2019 dr dash is also engaged with publications and projects he has more than 10 publications and book chapters in national and international journals as well as he is engaged with more than 5 research projects among the 5 projects uh one project is um in one project he has acted as principal investigator and which is completed in 2020 and in other three pods projects he worked as co principal investigator presently he is guiding msc thesis dr das is interested to carry his research work in the field of chronobiology sleep cognition and medical education so after this brief introduction i would like to invite dr das in the second session to deliver his lecture and uh, welcome you again sir um thank you. please you start your session the platform is yours now thank you so much sir thank you dr sudhakar madam thank you for this nice introduction uh before start i'm uh, going to start i want to thank uh, Uh, professor prashun pionaik sir and uh, the education committee of psi uh, because of this beautiful uh, online platform 
Prashant Pranak sir is one of my mentor as well. And uh, uh, this is all. And I, I, today's my topic uh, is on uh, diseases of endocrine system. I just share my slides. Uh, Is it shared? No, sir, it can't be seen right now. It is not visible. Is it shared now? No, sir. Still, it's not visible. Yes, sir. It's coming right now. I think. Yeah, it's yeah. Now. Sir, okay. now it's visible. Okay, okay. Sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, students. Uh, my topic of discussion is uh, diseases of uh, endocrine system. Uh, already, my introduction was given. Now, endocrine system uh, have uh, many glands, many diseases. So it is impossible to uh, discuss everything. And for undergraduates, I think uh, I need to restrict myself. Um, so uh, this learning objective of this session uh, was what I said, is to summarize the common uh, diseases of endocrine system. Uh, I want to explain, uh, uh, the student should explain uh, the pathophysiology of mechanism of the disease at the end of this session. And they can interpret the physiological basis of various uh, clinical presentation of those diseases. Now that today's topic I divided, uh, it's as uh, diseases of endo uh, adrenal glands, uh, diseases uh, due to abnormal growth hormone secretions, diseases of thyroid gland, parathyroid gland and pancreatic gland. Now to start with uh, diseases of adrenal gland, uh, Adrenal gland, to start all these diseases, I just want to uh, recapitulate uh, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so that uh, it will be easy to understand uh, the disease pathophysiological mechanism. Now, hypothalamus uh, releases releasing hormone. So, hypothalamus uh, uh, releasing hormone means, for example, in case of hypothalamic adrenal axis, it is corticotropin releasing hormone. So, which acts on the pituitary? Uh, pituitary uh, in that response releases adrenocorticotropic hormone and uh, then it uh, moves into the blood this adrenocorticotropic hormone and uh, comes and act on adrenal gland where it releases uh, cortisol aldosterone and androgens and it has a variety of uh, function uh, cell homeostasis energy metabolism androgenic activities all these things now here in this slide, I summarizes all the adrenal hormones. Uh, adrenal gland, which is a suprarenal gland, presented just above the kidney, both of the kidneys. And uh, it has a, a center core, medulla, outer cortex, uh, adrenal cortex. Again, cortex are uh, in three layers. Uh, they are zona glomerulosa, which uh, secretes aldosterone, fasciculata secretes cortisol majorly, and radiculata secretes uh, androgens, dihydroepiandrosterones. And the coarse adrenal medulla secrets epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are the catecholamines. Now, uh, to uh, understand the diseases involved in this in this adrenal hormones disorder, that means excess or hyposecretion, this slide uh, summarizes all the diseases together. Here we can see uh, the excess and the deficiency of uh, excess and deficiency uh, uh, in this column. And these are the adrenal cortical hormones and adrenal medullary hormones. Now, adrenal cortex releases glucocorticoid. So glucocorticoid excess producing Cushing syndrome and mineral corticoid excess producing primary hyperaldosteronism or Kohn's syndrome or secondary hyperaldosteronism. Uh, and androgen excess uh, can produce congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Catecholamine from adrenal medulla, if there is excess, in some cases that may produce a characteristic disease which is called pheochromocytoma and deficiency of adrenal cortex uh, uh, 
deficiency uh, disease leads to adrenal insufficiency or adrenal disease, which may be primary, secondary, and tertiary. So this is how we uh, categorize uh, the diseases or common diseases involved with adrenal glands. Now, to start with the Cushing syndrome, uh, I want to discuss this Cushing syndrome like this. Uh, it is, uh, the, uh, in one word, the Cushing syndrome is prolonged increase in the plasma glucocorticoid. So it has mainly two uh, uh, classification or two types of uh, uh, pathology uh, associated with the Cushing syndrome. One is ACTH independent Cushing syndrome, another is ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome. Now, what is uh, the meaning of ACTH independent? Here, the primary disease or primary defect is at the level of adrenal only. Uh, the causes are glucocorticoid secreting adrenal tumor, adrenal hyperplasia, or prolonged exogenous administration of glucocorticoid for any disease treatment. That means the major problem or primary problem is in the adrenal gland itself. So, uh, as because it has a, a, a excess uh, uh, cortisol, so it has its high negative feedback uh, to the pituitary and the uh, hypothalamus. So the ACTH uh, release from pituitary and CRH release uh, from hypothalamus will be inhibited. That's why these type of Cushing syndrome is called ACTH independent Cushing, Cushing syndrome. Another subtype is ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome where and the pathologies are ACTH secreting tumor of the anterior pituitary gland or tumor in the other organs which it, uh, releases uh, uh, ACTH or secrets ACTH which is also called ectopic ACTH syndrome. The word ectopic means, means which is not physiological, location is not physiological. Here uh, other organs which normally not secrets or not produce ACTH but due to some disease it secrets ectopic ACTH. So all these uh, ACTH releasing or ACTH secreting tumor uh, acts, uh, secretes more and more ACTH, which acts on the uh, adrenal glands and releases more and more cortisol and the Cushing syndrome will be there. But uh, the difference is here, ACTH level in the blood will be high. Now this syndrome I, uh, is being identified by Harvey Cushing. And when he discovered this Cushing and Cush syndrome with and classified all his uh, clinical features, uh, he only uh, identified uh, the primary cause is the pituitary tumor, anterior pituitary tumor. Uh, so, uh, but there are other uh, sources or conditions what we discussed may cause this same Cushing syndrome. So, any Cushing syndrome. Uh, due to an anterior pituitary tumor is called Cushing disease. So don't confuse on that Cushing disease is anterior pituitary tumor producing Cushing syndrome and Cushing syndrome means all the uh, conditions uh, producing Cushing syndrome like conditions. Now this Cushing syndrome has a, a variety of clinical presentations. So uh, we, uh, it's look like uh, this. Uh, this subject showing uh, uh, abnormal fat uh, deposition in the uh, abdomen, in the uh, back, moon face, thin extremities, bruises, stretch marks, all these things, which is a uh, characteristics of a uh, Cushing syndrome. Now we will have to know exact pathophysiological basis of these different symptoms. This table summarizes all this. Uh, excess glucocorticoid, we know already the previous speaker have discussed uh, the functions of cortisol. Thus now cortisol have its action on metabolic action and uh, other uh, action as well. So it just for example, it uh, produces protein catabolism, fat redistribution. Uh, it has carbo action on the um, uh, carbohydrate metabolism. Actually, uh, cortisol is a stress hormone. So any stress, if we feel it uh, secrets and uh, produces more and more uh, glucose from glycogenolysis or gluconeogenesis to deal with the stress system. So it has a vast role in carbohydrate metabolism. So all these roles of cortisol which will be heightened or overactive because of excess uh, glucocorticoids. So to start with, excess protein catabolism will be there. That leads to skin and subcutaneous tissue, thin, uh, that leads to thin uh, uh, skin and subcutaneous tissue, poor wound healing, 
and uh, can produce as bruises and echinosis. Now, terminology such as bruises means any mine uh, discoloration of the skin because of underlying capillary rupture. Echinosis is basically uh, underlying uh, bleeding, means capillary rupture, and uh, if there is a bleeding, that produces echinosis. Abnormal fat metabolism due to excess glucocorticoid leads to hyperlipidemia, buffalo hump, which is characteristic uh, deposition of fat in the back. And uh, there will be increased stretch map because of excessive fat deposition of the abdomen leads to rupture of the subdermal tissues. So reddish purple stri will be there. So these terminologies, which is in bold, are the characteristics of Cushing syndrome. Abnormal carbohydrate metabolism leads to excessive hyperglycemia and producing insulin resistance diabetes mellitus. Abnormal uh, mineral corticoid action because of uh, uh, ACTH dependent uh, uh, Cushing syndrome, ACTH will increase the action of mineral corticoid and androgen as well. So excess mineral corticoid action leads to salt water retention and which produces characteristic moon face appearance and red cheek appearance. Abnormal bone mineralization leads to osteoporosis because of excessive bone res dissolution. So bone mineralization, bone homeostasis will be changed and increase adrenal androgen as well as this, which increases uh, uh, facial uh, hair and acne. And it produces mental uh, uh, disorders as well, which may produce insomnia to psychosis as well. So these are the clinical features or symptoms or physiological basis of symptoms in the Cushing syndrome. Next disease uh, is hyperaldosteronism. Hyperaldosteronism is excess mineral corticoid action. It has two types, primary hyperaldosteronism, which is also called Korn's syndrome. Uh, it is as because the term is primary, definitely the disease in adrenal uh, gland only. So uh, causes will be adenoma of adrenal uh, glomerulosa structure. Now the term adenoma means benign tumor, uh, which produces uh, uh, these Korn syndrome or uh, mineral corticoid secretion or androgen secretion, unilateral or bilateral adrenal hyperplasia, adrenal carcinoma. That means all these diseases are confined to the prime uh, adrenal gland only. And secondary hyperaldosteronism, that means there is secondary uh, to other disease such as cirrhosis of liver, heart failure, nephrosis, all these chronic disease may increase the aldosterone secretion. So increased aldosterone secretion leads to increased sodium retention, water retention, potassium depletion, weakness, hypertension. This hypertension is due to increased sodium retention in long term. Uh, associated water retention leads to polyuria and uh, depletion of potassium leads to hypokalemic alkalosis. So these are the cardinal symptoms of mineralocorticoid excess or hyperaldosteronism. Next, we are going to discuss about adrenal insufficiency, which is the third uh, uh, type uh, of disorder where adrenal cortex is being destroyed. So uh, it is also classified as a primary adrenal deficiency because of destruction of adrenal cortex due to other diseases. For example, one of the commonest disease where it is seen is tuberculosis and other autoimmune, autoimmune diseases. So these tuberculosis autoimmune diseases destroys the adrenal cortex so uh, there is all the steroid hormones uh, uh, production is being uh, halted or de derranged so that uh, produces adrenal insufficiency mostly adrenal cortex is being affected what are the features as because cortisol is less and mineralocorticoids are less and uh, or uh, uh, no, not production no, no further production or adrenal adro androgens are also less in production so the features will be weight loss tiredness chronic hypotensive which may precipitate severe hypotension and shock so this is also called addisonian crisis so the the patient suddenly may precipitate shocks and severe hypotension because of less cortisol uh, action Fasting may cause fet uh, fetal hypoglycemia, any stress can cause collapse. That means these patients can't handle the stress 
as because cortisol is a stress hormone so as soon as we uh, are being stressed because of it may be due to uh, hypoglycemia it may be in animal kingdom it may be due to uh, the presence of predator so uh, any kind of stress uh, the cortisol will be released and uh, uh, usually released and it uh, acts like increased availability of glucose and other metabolic changes and to deal with this uh, stress but in adrenal insufficiency due to destruction of the adrenal cortex uh, because of any other disease these stress handling uh, by cortisol is absent so we can't uh, uh, handle the stress and that may precipitate hypotension shock hypoglycemia and collapse another important part is because of these uh, uh, steroid hormone insufficiency there are no feedback inhibition to the uh, pituitary and uh, hypothalamus so more and more crh and acth will be released and that acth can produce a, a different type of symptoms which is uh, a diffuse tanning of the skin spotty pigmentation of the skin as because acth can interact the melanocyte uh, stimulating hormone receptor mcr1 uh, uh, mcr1 and mcr2 uh, these are the name of the receptor where it can interact and may more and more melatonin can produce and this melatonin produces diffuse tanning of the skin generalized skin may be in the skin creases of the hand and the gum in the gums which is very common so these are the cardinal features of adrenal in insufficiency now to treat all these patient uh, only option is to replace the glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid hormones now these synthetic recombinant uh, uh, formulations are available and definitely sodium supplementation is there is required so this is all about adrenal insufficiency next uh, uh, okay uh, this, there are other um, uh, causes uh, of adrenal insufficiency such as secondary adrenal insufficiency and tertiary adrenal insufficiency secondary is due to pituitary diseases tertiary is due to hypothalamic diseases so that is different level uh, it is being named of uh, so all these diseases again uh, uh, produces less uh, uh, steroid hormones and produces adrenal insufficiency but there is a difference in case of primary adrenal deficiency uh, uh, because of less negative feedback more and more acth will be released but in secondary and tertiary deficiency uh, as because uh, the disease uh, problem is in the uh, pituitary or the hypothalamus itself no acth will be there so no pigmentation will be available or uh, seen in these type of uh, adrenal insufficiency next we are going to uh, discuss next disorder is congenital adrenal hyperplasia which is a, a disorder or excess adrenal androgen there is a loophole in the uh, physiological mechanism of uh, adreno uh, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis what is that uh, these congenital adrenal hyperplasia is uh, uh, basically an enzymatic defect in the synthesis of cortisol only. Cortisol. So uh, the commonest one is uh, 21 uh, hydroxylase enzyme deficiency. So that uh, deficiency leads to decreased uh, production of cortisol. But this decreased production is also associated with uh, increased ACTH and increase androgen now what is the uh, thing is that uh, normally hypothalamus releases crh and pituitary releases acth now this acth acts on the zona fasciculata of uh, adrenal cortex producing cortisol now there is a blockage of cortisol production as because of enzymatic defect uh, most common one is 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency so cortisol is not being produced so no negative feedback to pituitary and hypothalamus uh, so more and more acth will be released and that acth excess acth will act on zona reticularis and producing adrenal androgen now this excess androgen will have its biological effect which is uh, the congenital adrenal hyperplasia but these androgen don't have any negative feedback to the pituitary and hypothalamus and this loophole is responsible for these kind of adrenal uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia disease now what what affects 
so excess androgen leads to musculination of women musculination of external genitalia excessive facial and body hair called hirsutism acne in adult women so increase and in, uh, androgens produces all these clinical features now there are so many um, enzymatic type of enzymatic defects uh, leads to these congenital adrenal hyperplasia type so this is a uh, uh, a series of uh, reactions or uh, interact, interaction in the uh, glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis, where cholesterol from the substrate cholesterol and uh, aldosterone, cortisol, and uh, dihydropyandrosterones are produced. Now, there are several enzymatic defects in different levels which are producing congenital adrenal hyperpressure. Few of them is listed here. The most and commonest one is 21 beta hydroxylase deficiency. So, where is this enzyme? This is here. Uh, 21 hydroxylase deficiency now if these enzymes deficient so no cortisol no aldosterone will be there so uh, there is no negative feedback uh, to the pituitary and hypothalamus more and more ACTH will be released so more and renal androgen will be there so producing virilization virilization basically development of secondary sexual characteristics which, uh, and uh, that will be definitely as because of less aldosterone producing and adrenal hyperplasia, which is called salt losing form of adrenal hyperplasia. Another disease is 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. The enzyme is here 11 beta hydroxylase. Again, the same scenario no aldosterone, no cortisol, more and more ACTH. Uh, because of loss of negative feedback, more adrenal androgen producing same virilization. But here, uh, uh, more amount of deoxycortisol will be produced because this enzyme is being uh, deficient. This enzyme is be deficient. So up to this uh, sub uh, level and this level, there will be more production. So this 11 deoxycortisol or 11 deoxycortisone has some mineral corticoid action. So excess mineral corticoid action is also one of the features of this that producing uh, uh, more and more sodium retention and lots of sodium retention in long term producing hypertensive form of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. There are another important protein which is called steroidogenic acute regulatory protein or star protein. Now, star protein is held, uh, present uh, in the mitochondrial surface and which is responsible for delivery of cholesterol from outer mitochondrial surface to inner mitochondrial surf uh, surface so that cholesterol can be changed to preganalogen. Now, if these protein is being deficient at the level of mitochondria, so no, uh, uh, no steroid hormone can be produced because it is a primary step uh, to uh, produce pre -ganinerol. So as because uh, no aldosterone, no cortisol, no uh, dihydropyandrosterone is being generated, so it produces no negative feedback again, more and more ACTH again and produces adrenal hyperplasia. It is also associated with lipoidal accumulation in the adrenal gland only. But this type, uh, this uh, hyperplasia uh, or, uh, is not associated with virilization because uh, dihydropy endosterone is also it's not producing here. So this is uh, uh, all about uh, 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 congenital adrenal hyperplasia. The last uh, disease is pheochromocytoma. What we discussed, pheochromocytoma is a tumor of chromaffin tissue of adrenal medulla that produces excessive quantities of catecholamines such as epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, epinephrine and norepinephrine are catecholamines. They are also released in response to stress and they have vast action uh, mediated through adrenergic receptors. Uh, uh, for example, beta-1 adrenergic receptor present in the heart, so excess catecholamine can produce uh, increased heart rate, cardiac output, hypertension may produce and uh, uh, increase cardiac contractility. So, uh, in pheochromocytoma, uh, uh, the tumor of chromaffin tissue leads to excessive production of norepinephrine. Normally, adrenal medulla produces uh, more uh, 80 to 100 percent or more around 100 percent of uh, 
epinephrine and around 20 to 30 percent of norepinephrine rest of norepinephrine is being produced by the sympathetic postganglionic neurons so but the tumors of adrenal medulla produces mostly norepinephrine what are the symptoms symptoms will be hypertension because of uh, adrenergic uh, receptor mediated action headache increased sweating anxiety palpitation increase uh, heart rate may produce palpitation and chest pain these are the cardinal symptoms of your chromocytoma investigations how to identify it blood and 24-hour urine test shows elevated catecholamines and imaging studies may produces may shows the tumor of chromaffin tissue in adrenal medulla the treatment is uh, option is surgical ablation of the tumor chemotherapy and radiotherapy so all these adenoma in any disease the treatment option is surgical ablation and some chemical and radiotherapy is also possible this is uh, all about diseases of adrenal gland. So we have completed the first. Next is diseases due to abnormal growth hormone secretion. Now growth hormone also a pituitary hormone. Now to start with the growth hormone diseases, we just on I just want to recapitulate the growth hormone axis. So the hypothalamus releases again a releasing hormone, which is growth hormone releasing hormone, which acts on the pituitary. So it releases uh, pituitary releases growth hormone, and the growth hormone has vast action with the, throughout the body uh, distributors and producing growth and metabolic changes. It uh, uh, characteristically uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, acts on the liver, and liver produces one important uh, mm -hmm. uh, hormone, which is called insulin-like growth factor one and two. Now, this IGF one mm -hmm. is responsible for most of the uh, linear growth and organ growth in case of growth hormone. So, growth promoting effect uh, is done by both uh, IGF one and growth hormone, but most predominant one is IGF one. And definitely this IGF-1 has a negative feedback uh, to pituitary and hypothalamus. Now, what happens in excess growth hormone secretion? Again, a tumor of the somatotrops cell of anterior pituitary or pituitary adenoma secretes large amount of growth hormone, which produces uh, two Dif uh, different type of uh, clinical uh, condition uh, depending upon age uh, one is gigantism in children and acromegaly in adults so what happens here there is a tumor in the pituitary gland and uh, uh, arising in the specific type of cell which is called somatotrops now these somatotrops cells are responsible for growth hormone secretion now excessive somatotrops uh, uh, adenoma or uh, tumor producing excessive growth hormone and that growth hormone produces these clinical uh, syndromes symptoms uh, syndromes or which is called gigantism and acromegaly now what is gigantism and what is acromegaly now gigantism is excessive growth hormone secretion arises uh, before puberty that means what now uh, in normally uh, uh, our uh, mo most of the our uh, growth or you can say the linear growth uh, develop occurs during adolescence all and around uh, pubertal uh, time at this time maximum growth spurt occurs and after uh, adolescence when we are going into the adult phase our most of the epiphyseal growth or cartilage growth halts and, so, uh, and uh, we got our uh, uh, adult height at around 18 to 20 years maximum so if uh, uh, these tumor of anterior pituitary or uh, pituitary somatotrops tumor uh, develops or uh, uh, before puberty or during the growth spurt so growth hormone will produce excessive uh, uh, linear uh, growth and uh, which produce an, an extraordinary height along with that other difficulties this height is not so beneficial uh, and it's look like a giant and but the giant is not so uh, uh, just healthy so it's and producing a weak giant uh, symptoms and acromegaly is growth hormone secreting tumor which is arising in the uh, adult phase so when uh, linear growth is almost complete already we attend uh, uh, the maximum uh, height so it has a uh, different types of scenario of enlarged hands and feet only vertebral changes uh, may associated with osteoarthritis soft tissue soiling patchy soft tissue soiling mm, and uh, uh, protrusion of uh, eyebrow and jaw we can see 
so these are the uh, two different types of scenario that depends on the, uh, at what time of uh, age uh, the uh, benign tumor is being arises the treatment options are available one is somatostatin analog which inhibits growth hormone somatostatin is a uh, uh, neurohormone which release uh, at the level of pituitary and which inhibits the growth hormone so this uh, somatostatin analog synthetically generated recombinant uh, dna technology and uh, uh, these can be given and uh, uh, these uh, uh, inhibits the growth hormone um, and uh, can reduces uh, these symptoms but once gigantism is being uh, developed it is not produced uh, to decrease the weight uh, definitely but acromegaly symptoms can be reduced uh, with these somatostatin um, uh, analogs and it is widely used at present now other is other uh, treatment option is growth hormone receptor antagonist so that uh, drugs can be given and definitely surgical removal of the pituitary tumor so excessive growth hormone secretion leads to these two important uh, scenario one is gigantism here we can see a normal uh, person and a gigantism or gigantic uh, person which has a so increase and almost a double and but uh, it have uh, has definitely the subject have definitely other uh, problems such as uh, visual defect headache uh, proganthism excessive lower jaw bone will be excessive uh, in large and acromegaly which is an adult disease which is also seen in this picture where we can see this subject uh, at the age of uh, 9 16 is completely normal but at the age of 33 and, and the age of 52 that uh, there is characteristic change increase in hands and feet uh, vertebral osteoarthritis uh, protrusion of eyebrow and jaw bones all these things will be there so the treatment is somatostatin and low growth hormone antagonist or surgical removal of the pituitary tumor now this is excess growth hormone secretion definitely there is another condition where there is growth hormone secretion is lowered so what happens there there is the condition is called dwarfism dwarfism is that condition where growth hormone is lowered three types of dwarfism is found the most common and the maximum one 99 percent what we cases are due to pituitary dwarfism other uh, syndromes or which is uh, um, which is also found in different cases uh, are laron dwarfism and african pigments now what happens in pituitary dwarfism there is growth hormone releasing hormone deficiency at the level of uh, hypothalamus growth hormone deficiency at the level of uh, pituitary or deficient production of igf1 at the level of liver so that all these uh, produces uh, dwarfism at the level uh, it is called pituitary dwarfism because most commonly in the growth hormone deficiency is the cause the blood parameters will show reduce uh, plasma growth hormone level and definitely reduce plasma igf1 level and uh, the treatment will be uh, option is still available which is called recombinant human uh, growth hormone the supplementation which is given daily injection till the child's get appropriate height so pituitary dwarfism can be reversible with this recombinant you know, uh, technology or uh, growth hormone injection one of the important um, uh, famous uh, you know, footballer leonard messi have these pituitary dwarfism type of disease at the age of 10 it is being identified and he got the treatment and his club i think uh, uh, fc barcelona uh, sponsored all these uh, uh, recombinant uh, uh, treatment technology treatment and that's why he is there for rest of his life almost 20 years he played on that club only other diseases which is very rare uh, seen in a condition is called laron dwarfism and african pigments so what is what happened there is growth hormone receptor mutation so there is normal level of growth hormone available in the blood but growth hormone cannot act because its receptor are insensitive so that is called growth hormone insensitivity so what happens definitely dwarfism is there so blood parameter shows normal growth hormone level but the igf1 and its binding protein level is very reduced that's how we identify it's a what type of uh, dwarfism it is another important uh, finding uh, cases are african pygmies what is a that is a community found in africa uh, africa where uh, everything is normal growth hormone is normal and uh, I, its receptor is also normal but due to some unknown reason the plasma igf1 concentration fails to increase at the at the time of puberty when the maximum growth spark occurs 
hormones. So as because uh, IGF-1 is not available at the time of puberty, there is a dwarfism or decreased short stature would be seen. So uh, blood parameter shows normal growth hormone level and, and, and IGF-1 level will be reduced at the time of puberty. So uh, this is a picture of African pygmies. So this is uh, these are the uh, causes uh, of dwarfism um, uh, due to abnormalities in growth hormone secretion. There are other various causes of short stature or decreased height. Though uh, all these uh, are not uh, out of scope of this uh, endocrine system, but I still uh, want to uh, uh, tell this. Uh, so there are multiple causes of short stature. So just uh, just know the names. One is the cretinism. We are going to discuss this, you know, where thyroid hormone is being deficient, which produces short stature and mental retardation. We will mental retardation. We are going to discuss this in and and, and thyroid. There are others such as achondroplasia, where a mutation of fibroblast growth factor receptor in the cartilage, which produces short limbs and normal trunks. So all uh, uh, we uh, found uh, in. Uh, circus some people are uh, entertaining us the short stature people are mostly agonal which is one of the commonest cause of uh, short stature in uh, found in our society casper hauer syndrome is there where chronic abuse and neglect of a child may produce dwarfism uh, which is also called psychological dwarf constitutional delay of growth various chronic bone disease metabolic disease can produce a stunted growth Gonadal dysgenesis is another chromosomal disorder where XO chromosomal pattern is uh, available um, uh, instead of XX and XY, producing precocious puberty and stunted growth. Precocious puberty means early um, puberties. So these are the different uh, uh, conditions where short stature is uh, found, other than growth hormone uh, pathologies. Next, uh, so we have uh, completed the adrenal gland and growth hormone secretion. Next is uh, diseases of uh, thyroid gland. Now, again, to start with, we uh, need to recapitulate the thyroid hormone axis. The hypothalamus releases releasing hormone, which is called TRH, uh, thyroid hydrotropin releasing hormone from pituitary. It releases TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. At the level of thyroid, it is the T3, T4, and T, uh, T3, T4, and reverse T3 another type of uh, thyroid hormone all this discussed in the by my previous uh, speaker dr Saptajit. and it has its vast action one of the most important action is thermogenesis so thyroid hormone excess secretion thyroid hormone less secretion produces hyper and hypothyroidism now to start with hypothyroidism reduced thyroid function so there are different causes uh, are there which can produce insufficient thyroid hormone production what are the causes? First, most important, reduced dietary iodine intake. We all know iodine is one of the important uh, constituents of thyroid hormones. The intake of iodine is less, which is below 50 microgram per day, that may produce uh, 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 iodine deficiency uh, and reduce thyroid function. Uh, diseases of thyroid gland itself producing less thyroid hormone secretion and secondary to pituitary and hypothalamic failure. The, the first two causes producing primary hypothyroidism, second uh, and last of these causes producing secondary or tertiary hypothyroidism. What is the difference in primary hypothyroidism? The plasma level of T3, T4 will be low because, because of disease or reduced iron intake, thyroid hormone will not produce. But as uh, thyroid hormone is not produced, so there will be less negative feedback to pituitary and hypothalamus, so high plasma TSH will be. In secondary and tertiary hypothyroidism, because the disease is present itself in pituitary and uh, hypothalamic uh, hypothalamus, so low thyroid hormone as well as low plasma TSH is found. There are several uh, uh, other uh, causes of uh, hypothyroidism uh, in, in this table and to summarize this. The most important one is endemic hypothyroidism, which is due to iodine deficiency. Now, it is very uh, old disease. It is being identified and uh, uh, the pathology is being identified and uh, this, uh, it is due to uh, uh, producing less thyroid hormone, so more and more 
uh, less negative feedback so more and more TSH will be released uh, re uh, released and that TSH uh, acts on the thyroid gland and, in, and it produces hypertrophy of thyroid gland and that hypertrophy of thyroid gland is called goiter so that is also called iodine deficiency goiter and the treatment is iodine supplementation in the diet and thyroid hormone replacement therapy or thyroxine is given so uh, these iodine supplementation is uh, uh, one of the national program uh, by government of India so that uh, we got iodized salt and that as I iodized salt which decreases the disease uh, uh, condition and drastically in, in India and Indian scenario is improving now. This is how an iodine deficiency subject shows iodine deficiency quite an enlargement of thyroid gland because of iodine deficiency and excessive TSH release. Next condition is congenital hypothyroidism. Definitely congenital hypothyroidism means the deficient hypothyroidism present in the fetus or at the level of early childhood. So these produces a specific uh, syndrome which is called cretinism. Cretinism is a very damaging disease, regretful disease which produces severe mental retardation or intellectual, intellectual disability along with that short stature and with incomplete uh, skeletal development coarse facial features and protruding tongue so 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 these cretinism uh, develops because of uh, hypothyroidism in the fetus on or at the early childhood level the most important part is uh, it needs a routine neonatal screening such as t4 and tsh level and definitely thyroid hormone replacement therapy now cretinism it's look like this. This is a normal child of uh, two to three years of, uh, and this is a child with creatines, short stature with uh, facial features, characteristics, facial features will be there. Mental retardation will be there. So routine, uh, routine uh, neonatal screening is very essential. All of the institutional deliveries in India have, uh, as soon as the fetus, uh, the newborn baby uh, arrives, uh, neonatal screening of thyroid hormone is done. All institutional delivery, it is now a mandate or recommendations to deal with these uh, uh, congenital hypothyroidism. We have to replace it as early as possible if it is uh, deficient. Otherwise, uh, there will be severe intellectual di disability because thyroid hormone is an important uh, hormone which mediates uh, neuronal microenvironment and, uh, and uh, other uh, development of uh, skeletal and bone growth. Another important but rare disease is Hashimoto disease where uh, auto antibodies is being generated. That auto antibodies or auto autoimmune disease actually auto antibodies destroys the thyroid cell and thyroid follicular cells. There, there may be reactive um, uh, hypertrophy of the thyroid gland as well. So only treatment is thyroid hormone replacement. There are other causes, for example, hydrogenic causes of other uh, conditions such as radiochemical damage or surgical removal of the treatment of hypothyroidism, maybe nodular goiter, uh, maybe pituitary and hypothalamic disease. So all these causes leads to uh, less uh, thyroid hormone synthesis uh, and release. So thyroid hormone replacement and uh, is important and specific treatment to the disease is uh, important in case of uh, other goiters. The term iatrogenic means, uh, maybe it's new to uh, you people, uh, iatrogenic means uh, it is a type of disease uh, which produced by side effect of any treatment process. Means, uh, for example, there is a disease, uh, if there is hyperthyroidism and the treatment is surgical removal of the thyroid gland, uh, if uh, thyroid gland is completely removed, then there will be hypothyroidism after uh, recovery from the surgery. So these uh, disease, uh, th these hypothyroidism is called iatrogenic because it's developed because of uh, treatment process of any other disease. And that's why uh, when there is a thyroidectomy is done, some thyroid tissue is uh, uh, left so that some amount of uh, thyroid hormones will be released and hypothyroidic features will not precipitate. So this is all about uh, hypothyroidism. Next is hyperthyroidism. The causes are, this is overactive thyroid gland. The causes are Graves disease, toxic adenomas, maybe multinodular or solitary, TSH secreting pituitary tumor or iatrogenic hyperthyroidism. So uh, these are the causes. Uh, most important cause is Graves disease. Other will be the 
benign tumor which releases more and more uh, thyroid hormone that's why it is called toxic toxic means thyrotoxicosis may develop excess thyroid hormone produces this hypothyroid symptoms which is called thyrotoxicosis that's why the condition is called toxic adenoma it may be multinodular may be single or solitary now the most important uh, cause what it is a graves disease and in blood investigation what we found uh, the plasma level of t3 t4 will be high and um, as because of high negative feedback the plasma tsh level is low so that's why we identify the uh, hyperthyroidism condition now what is graves disease so some details about graves disease graves disease is a autoimmune disease where auto antibodies are producing which is stimulatory type Previously, in the previous slide, we uh, identified one disease which is called Hashimoto thyroiditis, where again autoantibodies are there, but that destroys the thyroid cells. So there will be hypothyroid features. But here, autoantibodies which stimulate uh, the TSH receptor. So more and more thyroid hormones are produced. So that produces <coughs> uh, hyperthyroidism. So marked increase in the T3, T4 will be there. Enlargement of the thyroid gland is there, goita. So goiter uh, as may associate it with hyper and hypothyroidism in both cases. It also associated with characteristic features which is called exophthalmos. The exophthalmos means thickening of extraocular muscles which uh, uh, characteristic features of Graves disease and other features of hypothyroidism. So there is a goiter enlargement uh, of the thyroid gland along with exophthalmos because of extraocular muscles are there. This is, this is uh, some type of infiltrative ophthalmopathy. So the some uh, uh, thickening of the extraocular muscles occurs and characteristic exophthalmos or protrusion of the eyeball is one of the important uh, feature of Graves disease. Around 30 to 50 percent cases of hyperthyroidism associated with exophthalmos. Now, uh, we discussed about hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, but their clinical uh, presentation is almost uh, almost antagonistic. So what actually we just uh, in this slide is I summarize just the features of hyper and hypothyroidism in these uh, aspects. Basal metabolic rate will be increased in hyperthyroidism. We all know thyroid hormone, thyroid gland produces, increases the BMR, basal metabolic rate. It produces thermogenesis. The functions of thyroid gland have been discussed by in my previous speaker. So where uh, increase heat production, producing hypothyroidism and decrease heat production, producing hypothyroidism. General behavior will show uh, in hyperthyroid cases, restlessness, anxiety, wakefulness is there patient will be very less stress and fine tremor is also associated in hyperthyroidism in thyrotoxicosis cases excess thyroid hormone and in hypothyroidism uh, there will be mental retardation in infant and in adults mental sl physical sluggishness is there characteristic feature exophthalmos we all know and uh, hypothyroidism that is mixed edematous features mixed edema is a type of non-pitting edema that means there is uh, some subdermal uh, deposition of mucopolysaccharides uh, that is synthesis which draws more and more water so there is edematous uh, features it may be diffuse edematous through the skin or it may be patchy edematous skin one of the patchy edematous type is lower extremity which is called pre-tibial mixed edema only in lower extremity at the level of tibial bone or uh, maybe mixed edema uh, features is available or it may seem in uh, diffuse throughout the skin uh, with these uh, non pitting edematous features which is a specific features for hypothyroidism Weight, uh, weight loss is seen in hyperthyroidism because of increased metabolism, uh, weight loss is there and increased appetite. So this is uh, some contrastic features. Here in hypothyroidism, weight gain but decrease appetite. Heat intolerance, cold intolerance in hypothyroidism. Increased cardiac output because of uh, uh, thyroid hormone action. Cardiac output will be increased, tachycardia, palpitation will be there. Decreased cardiac output and bradycardia in hypothyroidism. Increased sweating, thin skin and hair in seen in hypo, hypothyroidism. In hypothyroidism, decreased sweating, coarse and dry skin hair is seen. So these are the basic differences of hypothyroid and hyperthyroid symptoms. Assessment of thyroid function, hyperth hyperthyroidism, definitely total plasma uh, T3, T4 and reverse T3 will be high. Total free uh, plasma means to, uh, free and bound form. 
both and total free form of t3 t4 and reverse t3 will be high and because of high uh, thyroid hormone mm, there is negative feedback which decreases the plasma tsh level from pituitary hypothyroidism the condition is completely different and opposite low uh, plasma t3 t4 tot uh, low total free t3 t4 and high plasma tsh that's why uh, thyroid function can be assessed and hyper and hypothyroidism condition can be uh, evaluated so we have completed uh, the third disease which is the diseases of thyroid gland next uh, diseases of parathyroid gland now parathyroid gland is a uh, uh, gland which is so just closely opposed with the thyroid gland and it produces calcium homeostasis the parathyroid hormone so uh, what happens if parathyroid hormone uh, is in excess the condition is called primary hyperparathyroidism or secondary hyperparathyroidism what happens again solitary adenoma or benign tumor on the parathyroid gland which is the most common cause of hyperparathyroidism as because the adenoma is within the para parathyroid gland the condition is called primary and if uh, due to secondary to other disease any other disease if there is hyperparathyroidism the condition is called chronic kidney disease or uh, the condition is called secondary hyperparathyroidism the, uh, the diseases are chronic kidney disease or the rickets what happens on these hyperparathyroidism definitely elevated pth in the blood increased serum calcium level we all know and uh, the action of parathyroid gland discussed by my previous uh, speaker so if there is low serum calcium it can be sensed by the parathyroid uh, gland and more and more parathyroid hormone will be secreted which produces uh, bone resorption increases gastrointestinal absorption of the calcium more active vitamin d3 will be produces more intestinal absorption of calcium will be there so serum calcium will be, uh, level will be excessive low phosphate and calcium will be present in the urine so urine investigations and plasma investigation will detect hyperparathyroidism can identify hyperparathyroidism what are the clinical features because of increased bone resorption by the excess action of parathyroid so the radiographic manifestation proper neurological symptoms associated with fatigue mental confusion coma can be associated and these disease also associated with nephrolithiasis or it is called kidney stone the only treatment option is subtotal para thyroidectomy now the term subtotal means all parathyroid gland cannot be uh, removed because parathyroid hormone is essential uh, because it maintains the calcium homeostasis if parathyroid gland completely removed in the surgery that will produce uh, hypocalcemic features so the treatment is, is called subtotal some amount of parathyroid uh, uh, tissues is being left so that uh, uh, calcium homeostasis is still maintained but if um, excessive parath parathyroidectomy is done accidentally that produces this different uh, uh, hypocalcemic features two of these important hypocalcemic features are there which is due to the effect of parathyroidectomy which is chovastec sign and his strosio sign what happens in these signs if uh, con condition is parathyroidectomy where the calcium homeostasis is being deranged because uh, less parathyroid hormone what is the clinical presentation in that cases in this drop stack sign a quick contraction of ipsilateral muscles is, can be elicited by tapping over the facial knob in the angle of jaw this is the angle of jaw the facial nerves are present at around there if there is a tap in the facial nerve because of neuromuscular hyper excitability unilateral facial muscles will be contracted or some quick contraction is there so this is a pathognomic sign of hypocalcemic features which is normally seen in after seen after uh, parathyroidectomy surgery Another sign is strosio sign where what is seen a spasm of the muscle of the upper extremity so that causes flexion of the wrist flexion or at the level of wrist and the thumb thumb is also in flex position and extension in the fingers so that can also be elicited by uh, uh, increases uh, the, the BP cuff so that uh, less blood supply is available to the hand that can precipitate which is this strosio sign in case of hypocalcemia due to parathyroidectomy these two cardinal features helps us to identify which the para hypo para uh, parathyroid features or hypocalcemic features so we have completed the, the disease of parathyroid glands 
then the last one is uh, diseases of pancreatic glands we all know pancreatic glands produces insulin hormone and insulin uh, hormone uh, if uh, there is less insulin hormone or, uh, due to insulin resistance or uh, uh, insulin uh, not availability or deficiency producing diabetes mellitus so what is that the the abnormalities due to insulin deficiency and resistance now insulin deficiency leads to type 1 diabetes and insulin resistance uh, insulin sorry insulin resistance producing type 1 deficiency and insulin deficiency produce type 2 uh, diabetes mellitus type 1 is also called insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and type 2 is also called non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus now what happens in type 1 because of insulin deficiency there is because it is due to autoimmune destruction of beta cell of pancreas now beta cell of the pancreas if it is being destroyed uh, there will be less insulin or no insulin will be produced that uh, produces uh, typical features of uh, diabetes mellitus and this is normally or typically seen in uh, early of the age or maybe in adult uh, maybe in early childhood or in adolescence uh, before the age of uh, 20 to 30 uh, autoimmune destruction of pancreatic beta cells and uh, uh, insulin resistance which is type 2 diabetes which is seen in adult age because of uh, obesity or other multifactorial diseases by uh, causes are there so that is called non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus <coughs> so what are the cardinal features are there which is polyuria polydipsia and weight loss in spite of polyphagia and definitely hyperglycemia, glucosuria, ketosis, acidosis and coma. So, so many terminologies are there. Polyuria means excess urine formation, polydipsia, excess urge of drinking and uh, uh, weight loss will be there and uh, you know, then polyphagia is associ also associated hyperglycemia definitely uh, uh, because of less insulin but function of insulin is to uh, clear the blood glucose from the blood uh, it will increase the uptake of uh, glucose in muscles adipose tissues and liver as uh, insulin if, if insulin is not available all the blood uh, glucose will present in the, the blood so hyperglycemia uh, is present and that in increased glucose can present in the urea in urine produces glycosuria ketosis is there acidosis and coma will be there so uh, to uh, proper un uh, understanding of these uh, clinical features and uh, so uh, this slide will uh, discover all these things first there is insulin deficiency now insulin deficiency is also associated with glucagon excess because glucagon is um, uh, as a hormone you know, of uh, hypoglycemic conditions now insulin deficiency ultimately leads to decrease glucose uptake by peripheral tissue now if uh, glucose uptake is not uh, uh, there so the features will be a hyperglycemia and increased glucose in the urine glucosuria and these uh, glucose uh, uh, produces osmotic diuresis mm. and um, because of it is present in the urine and electrolyte depletion so on so these are the conditions of decreased peripheral uptake uh, of the glucose other conditions of insulin deficiency is increased protein, protein catabolism. Now, protein, if protein catabolism is increased, there is associated weight loss and uh, protein deficiency and increased plasma amino acids. Along with that, in the fat metabolism, which produce increased lipolysis because of insulin deficiency. That will produce increased plasma free fatty acid level and increase ketone body production which is called ketogenesis and in urine it will produce cretonuria now all these three conditions hyperglycemia glycosuria osmotic diuresis increase plasma amino acids increase ketogenesis leads to dehydration acidosis dehydration because of osmotic diuresis acidosis because of too many ketone bodies are there and uh, amino acids are there so this dehydration and acidosis lead can lead to coma and death so this is how our deficiency of insulin which leads to all these different types of uh, clinical scenario now uh, complications of diabetes we should know about long-standing diabetes because diabetes is a household disease almost every household has a, a diabetic patient so um, and diabetes itself it has no acute effect uh, 
So uh, uh, if uh, there is a long standing diabetes, there are so many diabetic complications are there. And these complications are detrimental that may produce fatal conditions. What are the um, complications? Complications can be classified in three parts, uh, microvascular complications, macrovascular complications and uh, neuropathic uh, complications. Microvascular are diabetic retinopathy and uh, uh, nephropathy, so retinal damage will be there or renal damage will be there. Macrovascular complications are atherosclerosis, diabetic foot, smigardal infarction, strokes are associated with. Neuropathic complications are autonomic neuronal microenvironment is deranged and that produces peripheral neuropathy and autonomic neuropathy. So this is how uh, complications of diabetes can be classified. Now the treatment options of diabetes, type 1 diabetes uh, can be treated. The main step therapy is exogenous insulin. That is the only option. We have to give exogenous subcutaneous insulin injections. And definitely carefully titrated intake of glucose is essential. And type 2 diabetes, which is a uh, lifestyle disease, actually. So lifestyle changes are there. Less carbohydrate intake uh, and exercise schedule uh, is to be included uh, so that uh, diabetes can be controlled. Other drugs are oral hypoglycemic drugs and insulin sensitization drugs have some effect to treat uh, in case of uh, diabetes mellitus. So this is all about different types of uh, diseases in the endocrine gland uh, there are many more diseases are aso uh, in present in the uh, associated with endocrine uh, glands and endocrine system but for undergraduates i think uh, these uh, common diseases are important uh, happy learning thank you education Hello. committee physiological society of india uh, for this very wonderful session we have enjoyed a lot and i think uh, the students our students uh, for uh, who are the uh, what is the main objective for the uh, subjects uh, for uh, this lecture series they will be very much benefited for this lecture series actually uh, so there is a question from one participant so uh, uh, i'm putting the question that is Shohini Dash asked that why low doses of parathormone is used for osteoporosis in spite of bone resorptive activity? Low dose of? Sir, I am repeating. Uh, um, yeah. Why low doses of parathormone is used for osteoporosis in spite of bone resorptive activity? Low bone dose resorptive of activity. Osteoporosis is a disease where bones are uh, somehow uh, dearranged. Now, low dose of parathormone, para parathyroid hormone has a uh, role of cal maintaining the calcium homeostasis. So, in osteoporosis, if calcium homeostasis is maintained properly, uh, that will be beneficial. But not all osteoporosis cases, we can use that low dose of parathormone. So it is a specific uh, type of osteoporosis where the calcium homeostasis is being deranged. Uh, we can use low dose of parathyroid, but it is a rare use. Uh, it is not a normal use of uh, uh, normal treatment in uh, osteoporosis. If there is any Thank question, you. you may ask. Any question from the participant side? Uh, I think uh, there is no more questions we are not getting. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dash, for this very wonderful presentation. Uh, Dr. Dash has elaborated uh, his topic uh, in all parts of the uh, pathological condition that is related to endocrine system. Actually, Dr. Tripathi has said the location of different endocrine glands in different parts of our body, but their activities or their functions are interrelated that's why it is known as a, a single system or single unit that is the endocrine system heard the uh, doctor uh, das said the effect of excess and the deficiency of different hormones and uh, how they are producing the pathological condition dr das clearly elaborates the difference between the sch independent and sch dependent cussing syndrome he differentiated normal and ectopic, um, exactly the pathophysiological basis of the different symptoms, 
diseases those are related to adrenal glands thyroid glands parathyroid gland pancreatic gland and the um, abnormal growth hormone secretion if there is uh, anything happening so um, not uh, it's uh, dr dash has elaborated not only the symptoms uh, that is related to the pathological condition or the abnormality of the hormones but is also tells the treatment procedure related to this pathological condition so uh, we are very much thankful to you uh, this i think this lecture will really be add on to the curricular aspects of the physiology for both undergraduate and the post graduate levels on behalf of education committee of the physiological society of india i am very much thankful to dr shatrujit tripathi and dr arun dash for their very wonderful presentation Thank you. Now, I'd like to request Dr. Prashun Priya Nayak to deliver uh, his vote of thanks uh, and uh, to announce the detail of the eight uh, lecture series of the Physiological Society of India. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, good evening. I think can we have uh, Dr. Binoy? Can we have uh, Dr. Tripathi, Dr. Arani also in the screen? Is Dr. Tripathi is available? Okay. Uh, on behalf of uh, education committee physiological society of india i really thank you very much uh, uh, dr sudhapa for uh, uh, hosting this and uh, anchoring this session or uh, dr tripathi is also there uh, dr tripathi is in <laughs> changing place no it's okay. anyway uh, <clears throat> thank you dr sudhapa for anchoring this uh, session nicely and uh, for dr aroni and dr satyajit i have uh, really assigned them a mammoth task it was so nice but uh, it was stupendously good it was stupendously good it was so nicely handled by both of them it's a huge task you know uh, endocrine system we take for undergraduate we take something around 18 to 20 hours uh, classes and those classes have been uh, like compressed like like windows file zipped through within 2 hours not even 2 hours it was uh, stupendously done it was amazing very good very good i a real applause for both the speakers thank you nice. very much thank you thank you very much uh, for accepting our invitation and taking your time to you. uh, to join with us to give your time and your expertise, your experiences to our participants. Thank you very much. It's a really pleasure to had, uh, have you on uh, this platform. And uh, hopefully, we'll be having you again uh, in some other perspectives. Like, uh, you know, this is uh, the beginning of the uh, physiology sessions we have started. It's like, uh, uh, this online series will be continued uh, every month, uh, as you can see in my background. Every month, it is 7 to 9 p.m., 4th Saturday, we are uh, running it. Initially, we have a plan that we will have the overview of all the systems. And then we will go in with the details of individual topic. And I believe your expertise, uh, Dr. Tripathi and Dr. Das, your, uh, your expertise will be uh, much needed there. So that where we will be having a detailed discussion on individual small act topics. So on behalf of Physiological Society of India, Education Committee, and on behalf of the participants, I really thankful to you for joining this session. Here, I would like to uh, mention that our uh, next session uh, will be on reproductive system. It will be session eight, reproductive system. 
and uh, the coordinator will be Dr. Madhvi Lata, professor and HOD from NRI Medical College, Andhra Pradesh. We will be having two distinguished speakers for the reproductive system, Dr. Nivedita Naha, scientist E and head, biochemistry department, division of biological sciences, ICMR, National Institute of Occupational Health, Ahmedabad. She will be talking on the female reproductive system. And uh, Dr. Venkata Venu Gopal Raju S, Professor and Head, Department of Physiology and Vice Principal of Ashram Medical College, Alluri Sitarama Raju Academy of Medical Science, Ashram Medical College, Eluru. Uh, we will be having them in our uh, board on the next session, session 8. And it will be coordinated by Professor Madhvi Lata, Professor and Head, Department of Physiology, NRI Medical College. So, thank you very much and uh, uh, gratitude from our side. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the uh, participants, uh, uh, those uh, someone, uh, Dr. Soheli Das, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, someone is Khos Mejaji, a uh, hit or miss. I don't know who he or she is, but thank you for participating. Uh, for it's a very intriguing question Dr. The Saheli Das has posed and Khos uh, Meja J. Heat or Miss has nicely answered it. It has been mentioned that PTH has both bone resorbing and forming effects depending on the pattern of secretion. Nicely. Intermittent or pulsatile administration of low doses seen with uh, teripatite, paratite stimulates bone formation more. Uh, so, thank you for your participation. However, it's an intriguing question and uh, we'll be going in detail later on. Thank you very much. And uh, before we end it, we hope to see you all on the next session of PSI online lecture series, session 8, which will be on reproductive system. And the coordinator, Dr. Madhvi Lata, speakers, Dr. Raju from Eluru Ashram Medical College and uh, Dr. Nivedita Naha from Ahmedabad NIOH, ICMR NIOH. Thank you. Thank you very much.